Oh, how are you? This is Edith Neumeyer. And I um, want to talk about Christian nationalism today. Now, what does that have to, be, have to do with the Bible? Well, quite a lot, doesn't it? I mean, we're using the word Christian and people calling themselves Christian followers of Jesus. And we want to know if, of course, Christian nationalism is biblical. I not long ago talked about Christian Zionism, and I think the two are related very much. Because, see, when you're focusing your attention on this world, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get Zionism, you're going to get nationalism. Very simple. I, I, I listened to several documentaries, and one of them I can't find. I don't know why I didn't save it. Very good documentary. Please go do your own research. Look at things about Christian nationalism. And he looked at some researcher surveys, and he's saying that most of those people that are national Christians or Christian nationalists, they really are not affiliated or don't go to church very often. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't think 100%. Because there's a lot of people in the churches, and I have gone through many churches, that really believe that the United States, and this is the fundamental of this national thinking, United States was established as a Christian nation. And even God established it. It was meant by God, which I'm not denying that, that maybe God was not supporting it, of course, because it actually uh, protected Christians. But it's really not right that it was built on what Christian and, and even you know, conservative Christian, evangelical ideas. The people that came here first were, of course, pilgrims, and they, do, they did believe. What did they believe? Go back and check out what pilgrims believed. Yeah, they believed in the Bible and Jesus. and But really, was their theology? And then, of course, after the pilgrims came, for instance, the Anabaptists, which actually were um, persecuted even in the United States. And they were given, what was it again, Rhode Island maybe? One of the islands at first, until the Constitution came and gave equal rights to every religion. In the separation of state and church is real. These early people that settled America, they had that in mind. The division of church and state, and that has been there from the beginning. Yes, of course, the settlers brought their faith into the, 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 uh, the schools and everything. And many schools may have been even, uh, you know, schools from um, run by, by the community. And of course, the community again was determined by what who uh, was settling there, whether it was settled by Protestants or Catholics. Yes, in the beginning we had more Protestants coming here simply because they were fleeing from the oppression of the homeland, Europe. 
And that is why they came here. And that's why they came up with separation of state and church. Because in the homeland, in Europe, the rulers determined what you were supposed to believe. If the rulers were Catholic, you better be Catholic or you're going to be killed. Yes, it went as far as killing somebody. If you're a Protestant, the same way. I know I'm from Germany. Germany was divided up into sections. And even when I was still, you know, as late as when I was born, there were actually Protestant sections and there were Catholic sections. And it went back to the rulers 100, 150 years ago. Whatever the ruler decided, whatever they are, that's what the people would become. And Germany was 50-50. But again, it was 50-50 Lutheran Catholic. The evangelical free churches were very few. Very, very few. Minorities. They were called sects when I grew up. So when these people came here, they were looking for freedom. And it was usually those people that were persecuted at first. And the, those were the, you know, the, the sects, the, the people that didn't fit in. You should know that. Of course, most people don't know history or even that part of history. And yeah, when the founding fathers, which, yes, they claimed to be, maybe claimed to be Christians, but there were most of them, if you really look at the historically, all the presidents were Masons. What does that tell you? I'm not going to say anything about Masons, but... They think different things. If you do a study of it. But the bottom line was really separation of state and church. Now, the only people that didn't believe in that were the Catholic. Because the Catholic believe that the Pope is the head. Not only the head of the church, but also the head of the state. And that's important to understand. Yes, that's what it is. Pope is above... Sorry, I need to look for my... So that's very important to know with the Pope. Pope is always first. Of course, for true believers, Christ is first. And that's the way it should be. But for the Catholic, it's the Pope. Why? Because the Pope replaced really Christ. This is something that we saw or see in Second Thessalonians 2. People don't want to acknowledge that, but it's true. Second Thessalonians 2. The man of sin puts himself into the temple of God. Ephesians 2, we know the temple of God is the church. The Pope put himself into the church as head of the church. Not Jesus anymore or the Holy Spirit. That's what true believers, Protestants, whatever believe. Evangelicals believe. Fundamental believers in Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church, not the Pope. But the Catholics below believe the, the head of the church is the Pope. And the Pope, even many of the popes, had no problem proclaiming that they are God. Matter of fact, 
you go back to the first pope, which I believe the first pope is, head of the church, Pontifex Maximus. If you go back to my videos about Pontifex Maximus, if you've been watching my videos that long, that the first Pontifex Maximus in the church, it was Constantine, head of the church. And Constantine proclaimed himself to his death that he was reincarnation of the sun god. So it's God. He wanted to be worshipped as God. So that's it. So that's what we have today. The Catholics are the ones that again want to be having this combination of state and church. Why? Because the Pope wants to control what's not only going on in the church, but also what's going on in government. Now, during the history of the United States, the Protestants really were in, let's say, power. Until actually... Kennedy, we did not have any Catholics as presidents. The Protestants were in a majority and they did not allow Catholics to be presidents. And I think Kennedy was one of them that was working very hard and promised not to follow the Pope. And so he became president. After Kennedy, we had mostly vice presidents that were Catholics. But then really, Biden was the first, well, not was the first, but was a Catholic vice president, and then actually was the first Catholic president. And if you go, follow my videos, you know what I think about the Catholic Church and about the pyramid of power. You know that I know or say that the Catholic Church is the man of sin of Babylon the Great. And that he is being used by Satan specifically to control the world and his system. The United States is a satanic system, really, because it was created in reality by Satan. Oh, we can scream and say, oh, these people, you know, they established the United States, but how many people meddled in it now for the past, what, 250 years? And how much did it really over the years got get in the hands again of Satan? Remember, it says in Revelation 13, the beast out of the earth, which is the United States, spoke or, or looked like a lamb, but spoke like the dragon. And I'm going to use the word the dragon, that's Satan. The second beast, the beast out of the earth, also gets its power from Satan. And yes, I'm sure God had something to do with us having protection, and I'm talking about the true believers in the United States for the past 250 years. But we have been infiltrated by the Catholic Church, by the Jesuits. They took over the education. They took over politics. They put over the, took over the money. And it's not very obvious because they don't want to be seen. They're doing that in hiding. But they've been taken over. So, A, all these people that scream Christian nationalism, my question is, who is behind it? Who is behind it? You know, with the same thing with the Christian Zionism, who is behind it? Is it 
originally really believe of the church? Is it originally a belief of the Bible? And I did my video. Please go back to that video because I don't want to talk about Zionism today. But let's stick with nationalism. I hope everybody knows the Lord's Prayer, right? Doesn't say anything about pray or even uh, support this worldly system, does it? No, it says, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. It spells it out. Thy kingdom come. So this kingdom on earth is not ours. We don't belong into this kingdom. We are not. There's not one early Christian or even Jesus that thought that we belong into this world. Jesus says, give Caesar what's Caesar's and God what's God. That's basically what he says. That is for me Separation of state and church. You give Caesar what Caesar, you give God what's God. No mixing. No mixing the two. We're living in this world, but we are only ambassadors in this world. We are strangers in this world. We're strangers. So we know that this is not our home. And therefore, we shouldn't affiliate with any government. I've done, like I said, many videos about this hierarchy of power and who all these players are, and that the United States is absolutely the beast out of the earth. He's the false prophet. So how in the world can we affiliate and associate with the U.S. government in any way, shape, or form? Uh, it's beyond me. It's really beyond me. It's, it's beyond my understanding. But again, I know where that movement could come from. Because I think originally that's not what the Protestant churches even believed. At least many. Like, for instance, you look at the, uh, the um, Amish. They're totally separation of state and uh, church. So somehow it, this, this idea that people, Christians, true believers, I don't know. And you know what I think about Christians, right? Uh, we're going to have to define that word because everybody is a Christian nowadays. Everybody. Catholics are Christians, Mormons, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witness, people that don't even go to church. I mean, we're all Christians, right? Almost. Everybody who wants to be a good person is Christian. But we're going to have to define that word. But if we're a true, true follower of Jesus, again, we have to look at the Bible. What does the Bible, what does the Bible say? Really? We're supposed to be, get entangled with this world. I mean, John said, don't love the world, neither the things that are in, in the world. That's what John said. I've read that before. All right. Looked it up. First John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life 
is not of the Father, but of the world. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abideth forever. Of course, we can now think, oh, that has something to do with lusts and desires and, you know, things like that. But, again, is a good government not a lust as well? We want to do well here, right? We want to make our nest here in this world. I think it's the same thing. The world is the world. And our government is the world. It was created by by Satan. There's no doubt. Please, watch my videos. Created by Satan himself. Again, watch my video with maybe Antichrist. Absolutely. This system, if you know just a little bit about the beast system, right? Just a little bit about the beast system. Beast out of the sea, which is Europe. Of course, if you have not studied that and you follow these false teachers, then you're all over the place and really don't know who the beast is. No, the beast is not coming at the end sometimes. The beast has been here. There were four beasts, or there are four beasts. There will be four beasts, according to Daniel. And the fourth beast will last until Jesus returns. So obviously it's still here. And it's been here since the other three beasts. The other three beasts were, um, let's see, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And Rome turned into the Holy Roman Empire and continued and will continue to the end. Today it is Europe. Nevertheless, it's the beast out of the sea. Then we have another empire that Daniel didn't see, and that is the beast out of the earth. That's also the false prophet. And that's, again, it's an empire, a political system. And that can only be the United States. Only People, it cannot be Russia, it cannot be, it's an empire. It's not a small little country, it's not a small little, you know, ruler or whatever. No, it's an empire. Look at the empires today, what do we have? Okay, we have Europe that was wounded, which was the beast out of the the sea. It's, it was wounded. And who jumped in to protect it? It was the beast out of the earth. And who jumped in to protect Europe? Nurse it back to life. Russia? No. China? No. There's only one left. The United States. So the United States is the beast out of the earth. It's the false prophet. And how can anybody in this world that calls themselves Christian support something like that? Again, the only way they can is when they are taught false doctrine. And again, I believe it's coming from the man of sin. Because he's the only one who is interested in bringing back the system that we used to have in Europe, this hierarchy of power in Europe, back. You have the rulers. The rulers told the people what to do. The people had to listen to the rulers, and the rulers were um, accountable to the Pope. That's the system you had in Europe. That's connection of state and church. Hierarchy of power. And the Protestants never believed that. Never. But is it going back to that? Yeah, because people are telling people, oh, you know what, the United States is, is special, and it was 
founded by God. No. God maybe had something to do with it. I don't doubt it one bit. But it also is in the hands of human beings and of Satan. And any worldly system, people, is corrupt and will get corrupted even if it starts good. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's the way it is. So I know maybe the people that are watching my videos, they don't believe that. But I want them to be aware. I want you guys to be aware of what's going on out there. And also what the other side, maybe the atheist side or the Democrats, okay, which we have a lot of people that don't believe, are thinking about this. I don't even know what the right and the left. I have no idea what the right and the left is. But the extreme conservative side believes. See, they are blaming. They're saying, oh, all Christians are Christian nationalists. Oh, all they all want to take over the government. And that's why we had, actually, this January 6th. Because somebody wanted to get these people in trouble. January 6th, again, they were people that were, most probably people, they were just totally innocent. They didn't know what was going on. They were just cheap running along. And then there's a group of people that's trying to mislead them. I don't know which side it was. Was it the Christian national side? Was it even the other side, the democratic side, that are so afraid of those Christians? Okay, and I also saw a lot of videos. Oh, what Trump is using these Christians, of course, and he did, you know, for his benefit to win, to become, in, you know, to power. And that's why I need people to understand this whole situation. They need to do, you know, inform, inform yourself about what's going on out there. So you don't get pulled into this. During the elections, I made videos saying, do not, and, and again, I, I'm sorry if I come across so strongly, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend anybody to vote. Why? Because... This world is not our world. I want it to be pleasant here too. But both parties are in the hands. I think I made that very clear in my videos. Please check my videos. Both parties are in the hands of the same shadow government. Trump is not going to do anything different. Oh, yeah, he's saying he's going to do this because he wanted to win. But in reality, he cannot follow anything else except what the hierarchy of power is telling them. Hierarchy of power, what do we have? What does it go up to? Again, it goes through the Vatican. It goes definitely the fallen angels and Lucifer. I've said in one of my videos, the fallen angels are absolutely in our government today. And they are part of that deep shadow government. That's why people never get any further than the money. Because who else will they see? They see the money, they see the ruling, the elite, and that's where they stop. They don't understand that there's fallen angels or that there's even the Pope. Or we don't see the, the Pope. The Pope doesn't do anything, right? And, of course, we don't see the Jesuits because they're hiding anyways in the shadow. <laughs> shadow, right? And, of course, there's the fallen angels. They have been ruling this world, have been ruling or helping uh, uh, Satan or Lucifer ruled this world. And we're supposed to 
support that? Really? People I know, I can preach all I want. My videos are not going out there unless you are helping me. Please give me, therefore, a thumbs up. They say that's supposed to be helping. Don't know. Okay? I love comments. And share my videos. Share my videos. And pray. Pray that God will reach people. We have so many people that are blind and they're going the wrong way. They absolutely go in the wrong way. I just had a conversation with, um, uh, I don't know if you remember, previous video I talked about, is it the last one maybe? I don't remember. I mentioned a chain. I don't remember. What is it? Walden? Is it J Jamie, Jamie Walden? And um, he was interviewed, and the person that interviewed him, the channel that interviewed him, actually wrote me back a comment. You can read it. I think it's the last video video before that. And you can follow what he wrote. I don't think these people, of course, deceive people purposely. But I can tell you they don't read the Bible. Well, they may be glancing over and reading over. No, you have to dig, dig into it. You have to study it. Analyzing it. Not just reading it over and then go to somebody's commentary, you know, and then think that they're going to tell you. They're not going to tell you. You're going to have to take your time, take the Holy Spirit or use the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to guide you. I don't even, I cannot even do the job. I can only point people to certain verses, certain things that they need to read and study. It's all I can do, people. And yes, everything is not in the Bible. Like I said in that video um, with the comet, asteroid, and I think that's what it was when I commented with the asteroid um, Apophis, you know, that the the wrath of God, I don't know how long the wrath of God is. I know that it has to be at least four years, but that's at least four years. And I say at least four years because I see that in the Bible, but it is not clear. Okay, that is for, I cannot imagine it's going to be longer because then no, nobody is there that will preach the gospel. Okay, so that's really combination of assuming and proof that I see in the Bible. So here's just one point. Not everything is clear. But see, if it's not clear, we cannot uh, make it like it is the truth. People, we have to analyze the Bible. We have to, you know, collect information from the Bible and historically, how it fits in there to get the whole picture. And that's the most important thing. Not our own, oh, I think that's what it means, you know, okay, you know, whatever. Like this guy that commented, it says, oh, the Armageddon War is the same as the Gog and Magog War. It's like, really? You have really studied that? Really, really. I have done a study about Gog and Magog War. I don't know how many. Pointing it out clearly. No, there is no way that it's the same. I go by definition, description, and it's not the same. Gog and Magog War is at the end of the millennium and Armageddon Wars before, in front, before. It's like, it has it clearly in Revelation. Anyways, I don't want to go there so much.
people that points to the direction, no, don't mix state and church. Give Caesar what's Caesar's, give God what's God. And our kingdom is from heaven. Our kingdom is only from Jesus. We are waiting for our king to come to establish the kingdom. And we are in such a wonderful time that that can actually happen in our, during our lifetime. But if it's not, we're going to live here as ambassadors. It's exactly what Abraham did. He knew he was not from this world. And if Abraham is our father, we better live like Abraham did. Coming to an end with that, let the Holy Spirit guide you always.